How's it going, ladies and gentlemen? Mr. Donahue here once again. This time we're going to take a look at resonance structures. So our objectives are to describe what resonance is and determine when res resonance occurs in a molecule. All right, let's get going. So first off, drawing Lewis structures. That's how you're going to start. You got a molecule O3, let's say, and you're going to just start drawing the Lewis structure. So you do the same thing you do for all Lewis structures. You sum the valence electrons for all the atoms. So if it's O3, I know I have three sets of six, so I have 18 total balance electrons. Next step, write the symbols for all the elements and connect them with a single bond. So I'm going to put, all right, well, there's just three oxygens. So I'm going to draw three oxygens connected with a single bond. Next, complete the octets for the non-central atoms. So you go, all right, cool. I'm going to do one, two, three, four, five, six, and then the bond is seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Same process. Now place leftover electrons on the central atom. All right, well, I placed 16 so far. There's 17 and 18. And now if there isn't enough valence electrons for the central atom, atom to have an octet, try making multiple bonds. Well, right now, the central atom only has six valence electrons. So I got to make a multiple bond. So for one of these oxygens, I'm going to steal two of those valence electrons. I'm going to make a double bond with it. So now something might jump out at you. You go, well, why did I choose that oxygen? Why wasn't it the other oxygen? And that's how you're going to know that there's resonance. You know, which one is it? Is it going to be the one where the double bond's on the left, or is it going to be the one where the double bond's on the right? Which one's the right one? You know, which one of these oxygens is more special than the other that gets the double bond? Why isn't the other one getting it? Well, the answer is both the right, uh, I'm sorry, both structures are right. Neither oxygen is more special than the other one. So what the molecule actually looks like is going to be a mixture of these two structures. So it's going to look a little bit like the structure on the left, and it's also going to look a little bit like the structure on the right. It's not going to be one or the other. It's going to be a combo of the two. That's how you know you have resonance. Whenever you can ask kind of this question, like why, why that one, why not the other one, they're equivalent, that's how you know there's resonance. So resonance structures. When there are two or more equally good Lewis structures, resonance exists. So the actual molecule isn't going to be one or the other, and it's not going to be switching between the two. The observed structure is going to be a blend of those two. So the, if the structure on the left looked red and the structure on the right looked yellow, the actual structure is going to look orange. It's going to be a mixture of the two. It's not going to be red. It's not going to be yellow. It's going to be kind of in between those two things. And it's not switching back and forth between red and yellow. It's just orange. It's not red for a little bit and yellow for a little bit. No, it's just permanently orange. It's permanently this in-between thing. So the resonance also tends to make the molecule more stable. So bond lengths. If we're talking about bond lengths, we know that single bonds tend to be the longest. So if I'm looking at this oxygen-oxygen single bond, it's about 147 picometers. And if I look at the double bond, it's 121 picometers. So you know that double bond is shorter. All right, well, if we're saying that the real structure isn't one or the other, that it's a mixture of the two, what is it going to look like? Well, the bond lengths are going to be between single and double bond lengths. So you look, the observed bond length for ozone is 128 picometers. So it's somewhere in between 147 and 121. It's a mixture of the two. So the observed length is, you know, between single and the double bond length. It's somewhere in between. It's a mixture. Then where are the electrons? You know, I know these uh, double bonds typically means four electrons are being shared between those two atoms. And if you're telling me it's a mixture of, you know, the left structure and the right structure, where are those double bond electrons actually going to be? We call them delocalized electrons because they're not going to be localized between just one set of atoms. They're actually going to be shared and uh, move around the entire molecule. They're not localized. They're delocalized. Like they're on the whole molecule. So how do we indicate resonance in our Lewis structures? You know, it's uh, we draw these Lewis structures. We're like, hey, we got two in this example, equally good Lewis structures. So the way you're going to show that there's resonance is you got to draw both structures, and then you draw this little double arrow in between them, saying, hey, it's both of these things. It's somewhere actually in between those two Lewis structures. If there's more than two, you draw all of them, right? The observed bonds are going to be between a single and a double bond, you know, in terms of what they're like. But we have no way of drawing, like, a single double in between somewhere bond. So 
That's how I draw. Like I said, again, if there's more than two resonance structures, draw them all. So let's do a little practice. All right. Oh, NO3 minus. So again, first thing I'm going to do is sum up all the valence electrons. Nitrogen has five. We have three oxygens, each with six. And then this minus right there is telling me I have one more electron. So I have a total of 24 valence electrons. So again, put one in the middle, single bond to all of those oxygens, complete the octets, which is going to take me a second. So now, once I've counted all the electrons, I've placed 24 electrons. I don't have any more, and this nitrogen doesn't have an octet. It's only got six. So the way I'm going to fix that is I'm going to make a multiple bond with one of these oxygens. So maybe I'm going to steal these electrons and make a multiple bond with that nitrogen. Now, again, hey, wait a minute. I just, why, why that oxygen? Why not this oxygen? Why not that oxygen? Because I'm able to ask that question, it tells me that I have resonance. So I'm going to draw double arrow to the other way that it could have gone. It could have been double bond on that oxygen. Right? Minus, and then uh, I'll do the painstaking thing of drawing in all the valence electrons. I don't want to be too lazy, right? So, but wait a minute, there's a third option it could be. So that tells me that I have a third resonance structure and it's gonna look really similar, except this time the double bond is on that other oxygen. So yeah, that's how you know you have resonance. You go, hey, why did I put a multiple bond there and not on a different oxygen? And if there's no good reason you can think of, well then you have resonance. So what the actual molecule is gonna look like is it's gonna look a, like a blend of this. So all of those bonds, they're not going to be single bond length or double bond length. They're going to be kind of two parts single, one part double bond. So it's going to probably be closer to the single bond length than the double bond, but it's still going to be a mixture of those three. Another one. All right, sulfur has six valence electrons, plus we got three oxygens each with six. So again, that gives me 24 valence electrons. So I'm going to do the same process. Sulfur in the middle, oxygen, oxygen, oxygen. And then complete the octets. Again, once I complete these octets, I will have placed all 24 of my valence electrons, but that leaves sulfur missing some. So again, I'm gonna make a multiple bond. I'm gonna steal some electrons from one of the oxygens. And now I'm left with the question, well, why that oxygen? Well, good question, because I can't answer it. You know, what makes that oxygen special? Nothing, they're all equivalent. That tells me that I have resonance. I'm gonna have three structures again instead of the double bond being on that oxygen it's going to be on a different oxygen and then uh i have a third one now i'm getting lazy with a double bond on the other oxygen All right so i didn't draw in these i guess oh, i guess i should All right so i'm going to finish i'm not going to bother you get it all right so i end up with three resonance structures what's the actual so3 molecule going to look like it's going to look like a blend of those three things Benzene. Benzene's a special case. It's uh, going to come up a bunch. It's a closed ring hydrocarbon, meaning that it, you make a circle. So if I have C6H6, it's going to be six carbons. And then draw my single bonds. And then what's interesting about this molecule is it has alternating double bonds between those carbons. So now each of those carbons has one hydrogen coming off of it. And now the question is, well, why did I put those double bonds where I put them? Couldn't I put them bet between the other carbons? And I sure could have. So now I'm going to draw the same thing again. But now my double bonds are going to be in a different spot because I'm drawing the resonance structures. So instead of having a double bond here, it's going to end up here, there, and there. And then again, I draw in my hydrogens. And this is a really kind of obnoxious thing to draw all the time. So... Scientists have decided, you know what? This kind of looks like uh, one of those nuts with the nuts and bolts. So I'm going to shorthand it, draw a little hexagon. And then because we have this resonance and we have the delocalized electrons, these multiple bond electrons aren't stuck between those two carbons. They're actually on the whole molecule. So I'm going to draw, that's, that's my shortcut. I'm not even going to draw the H's. We fellow scientists will know that there's hydrogens there. That's benzene. I don't have to worry about it. So, yeah, 
that's uh that's part of it. And if you take a look, all right, well, what are the bond lengths going to look like? I know typically for a carbon-carbon bond, the bond length is 100 or 1.54 angstroms. Double bond is 1.34 angstroms. So I know that, hey, if I have this resonance structure and it's really a cross between a single bond and a double bond, hopefully, you know, I would expect to see the bond lengths being somewhere between a single bond length and a double bond length. And that's, in fact, what you do see. You get 1.4 angstroms right in between a single and double bond. So shorthand for it kind of looks like a nut for a bolt, which, you know, from now on, this is infinitely easier to draw than any of those two resonance structures. So I would encourage you to do that. All right, summarize. Can you describe what resonance is and can you determine res when resonance occurs in a molecule? I sure hope so. Otherwise, I failed you. And then uh, if that's the case, I'm going to go hide in shame. I'm sorry. Okay, I hope you find a helpful. I'll see you in class. Okay, bye.